Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. This is our April viewer mailbag episode where I answer your questions. So first off, I wanna say a big thanks to Keith Williams with Five Watt World. Uh, Keith has not only been uh, a dear friend to me, especially in the last couple months of uh, you know, of less contact with people and uh, have enjoyed phone conversations with him. Uh, we've been able to kind of influence each other and he's kind of mentored me uh, going from doing like the interviews with the True Tone Lounge to doing kind of my own page. And in Keith's uh, Jazz Master episode, he gave me a big, uh, you know, big kind of shout out, a big plug. So I want to thank Keith uh, just for that and for his friendship and his help, uh, because I've learned a lot from him. And he has a great page, and uh, most of you are probably already aware of him, but if you're not, go check it out. Um, any of his episodes are great. He tends to have episodes that are short histories or these more philosophical ones about um, how many guitars is enough and uh, you know what do I need and things like that. And uh, I enjoy uh, you know both both types of episodes, but you need to go and check check him out. So, back to uh, answering questions. Actually, one more correction, and this is in the uh, the nickel, the pure nickel strings episode. I uh, kind of got extemporaneous and uh, and started talking about uh, Battle Creek, Michigan, and that it may be that GHS was making Fender strings at some point. And no, that's not true. There were actually two factories in uh, in Battle Creek and one was GHS and the other one was VC Squire. And I knew about VC Squire and so I wish that I would have uh, <laughs> double checked that first. But anyway, but here I am correcting that. So VC Squire supplied Fender with strings starting in the 50s and then they uh, were bought by Fender in the 60s and then they were final and they made all of Fender strings up until 1981 and that's when the factory in Battle Creek was shuttered in 1981. Then of course they owned the Squire name and again note the spelling S-Q-U-I-E-R which is not of course the spelling if you were having a knight and a squire and uh, but because they owned that already that's why they used that for the Squire line so that way they didn't have to buy another trademark so they had Squire. All right, on to the questions. So uh, this is by Aaron Booth, and he asked on the Maple Cap Telecaster episode, he said, what made you choose steel saddles versus brass? Well, of course, that 67 Tele originally had steel saddles. It had the threaded ones on it, and I really liked the sound of it. And I tried brass on there, and the brass really darkened it and kind of took away the liveliness. And so uh, I ended up, I wanted compensated saddles. And so I ended up going with C and J tooling saddles, which unfortunately are not made anymore because the, uh, the owner of the company passed away. Uh, but uh, there are all parts, tons of companies make, uh, you know, steel and brass compensated saddles. Um, the one thing I would say if you are going for that old steel saddle sound, uh, try to find a lighter set of steel because that was kind of my battle when I was uh, you know, working on my 67 Tele was going from those original threaded saddles and they were lightweight. They weighed next to nothing. And then a lot of the replacements were very heavy steel and they changed the tone of the guitar. And I didn't like the change. And so uh, it took me a while to find some really light steel, and the CNJ tooling did that. Uh, yeah, brass uh, tends to be darker and more compressed and less lively sounding. And it just depends on the guitar. So I you will use brass or steel. Sometimes I'll, I'll throw on a set of brass, you know, onto a guitar and see if I like it or not. Uh, I think Leo kind of got it right in the beginning with, you know, using the brass saddles with the flat pole bridge and I think you know the staggered pole with the steel saddles is a really good combination but you can mix and match and do whatever you want. All right any uh, this is from uh, Michael Flowers and it says any guidance on acquiring an inexpensive telly fender or not that gets that spanky tone? Well I really like as far as 
I mean, one, you just got to go and play a bunch of guitars. Um, the best thing you can do is find a place that has a bunch of guitars and, uh, and play a bunch of them. Uh, you know, you could find a good, you know, inexpensive, uh, you know, Indonesian squire that, that has a good sound to it. As far as just, a a kind of general purpose, you know, not overly expensive guitar that I found that has a good traditional kind of vintage Telecaster type sound or this spanky, uh, as uh, Michael refers to, I would say the old road worn series that they, they just stopped it recently. But, uh, those road worns that were made in Mexico, the, the kind of black guard or white guard version, they started those in 2009 and they just stopped production on them last year. There's tons of them out there. Some of them are kind of climbing in price, uh, but a lot of them you can still find in 600 range. And those are great guitars. Uh, the most you need to do to those is maybe change the pickups out, maybe change the pots, uh, but they're, they're great guitars. Uh, here's another one. This is by Cass. Zach, uh, can I ask an unrelated question? Keith Williams from Five Watt World tells me you're the one to ask. Why do Strats and Tellys have slightly different neck pockets? From what I can gather of Leo, that's not what I would have expected. Well, that's a great question. You're talking about the, the heel of the neck, how on a Telecaster or Esquire, or whatever, it's squared off. And then on most other Fender instruments, it's, it's curved. So I'm, I'm still in the process of doing research on this, but I talked to Nacho, who of course wrote the Blackguard book, and he's one of the foremost uh, experts on early Fender stuff. Uh, he said that he felt like Bill Carson had, uh, an influence on that in that, you know, making the, uh, from going from the Telecaster to the Strat, that there was a lot of push by him to make things have more curve to it, such as the contoured body, the more contoured headstock, uh, the tummy cut, uh, the forearm cut, uh, the double cutaway, not saying that Bill Carson did that, but there was a lot of his influence. And again, it, it's like somebody saying, Hey mom, I'd like a chocolate cake. Well, Bill Carson didn't, you know, didn't create those things. Leo Fender and Freddie Tav Tavares are, uh, sorry, I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Um, you know, those guys are the ones that actually, you know, did the handiwork and, and, and made it. But, uh, Bill Carson was definitely, uh, influential as far as a, a taste tester and, uh, you know, somebody asking, you know, for, uh, for features on guitars. So I'm still trying to find out more information on that, but that's what the answer is at this point. This is from Tim Dubrava, and he says that he wants a B-Bender Telly, but doesn't want to drop three grand or more on one. Uh, yeah, you do not have to, uh, you know, spend three grand on a, on a Telecaster by any means. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, those road worn tellies are great. You know, you can find those used and then it costs about $500 to have a B bender put on. Um, there are a ton of guys. Um, I'm going to have to say my favorite is the Glazer type. And, uh, Joe Glazer has just, uh, you know, kind of retooled his bender and made it where he can install it even, uh, you know, in, in less time than ever before. He can do it in like three or four days. And I don't think anyone else has that short of a, uh, install time. So, uh, you know, of course there's guys doing Parsons white benders and other types of, you know, benders, but I would recommend Joe Glazer. Uh, yeah. So I think if you got a road worn and had a bender put on it, you'd probably have, you know, $1,500 or less in the guitar. Next, uh, people, you know, some guys, uh, Will Van Han Solo, my friend and who I can have publicly congratulated and will congratulate here because he's been, uh, 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 if you're not familiar with Tom Bukovac, Tom Bukovac, of course, is a famous Nashville session guitar player, and he has his own YouTube channel now, and he's been posting stuff every day, and if you haven't seen it, you need to check it out. Anyway, he had a uh, contest, and uh, Will Van Han Solo made it to round two, so let's hope that he, uh, he wins it all. But Will asked to hear the Danocaster guitar, which I have right here, into the Harvard and also had the uh, people wanted to hear the Harvard versus the Deluxe Reverb. All right, so 
Now to do this, um, so I have an AB switch, so I can switch between seamlessly between the Deluxe and the Harvard. Uh, I will have to add that I had to put in a, uh, an isolation transformer on one of the amps to keep it from, uh, from buzzing, because whenever you connect two amplifiers to each other, they just tend to uh, start making noise, and I like to have a pretty low uh, noise floor. You know. So I have a uh, uh, Mario at Access Electronics made me this really nice box uh, many years ago when I was working for Brad Paisley. It has a single input and then it has two isolation transformers for two of the outputs and then it has a, a, a straight out. And so that can, I did that because uh, I needed that when uh, recording multiple amps at the same time with, with Brad Paisley. So I'm using just a, a, a good old uh, AB box and uh, yeah. And so I'm gonna go switch between the two um, and I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna start with the Harvard and every time I click, which you'll be able to hear this foot switch, you know, click, you'll hear as I go back and forth. Um, and you'll know when it's the deluxe because I, I chose to leave the, the reverb on because that's part of the amp sound. So, yeah, so the dry sound is the Harvard and the sound with a, with a touch of a verb is the, uh, is the deluxe. And, and again, just so you know, I'm starting with the Harvard and every time I click, I'm switching to the other amp. Uh, and here we go. I'm, of course, got my handy dandy uh, Dano caster and uh, yeah, medium pick using the rounded end, uh, starting on the neck pickup. Here's the Harvard. Let's see. that ended on the uh, on the deluxe reverb I'm go to the back pickup um Uh, you know, kind of the, the difference between the, the Deluxe and the, uh, and the Harvard. I think you can hear that uh, obviously the mid-range is very different on the two. Um, you know, the, the Tweed has a little more, you know, kind of compression. Again, I'm not using any, any effects at all. Uh, you know, you have a, a, a five-tube amp <laughs> with a 10-inch speaker and you have a nine-tube amp, you know, with a 12-inch speaker and a bigger cab. So, I mean, part of the difference you're hearing is speakers and cabs. But, you know, this has a very, very simple circuit and this has a more complex circuit and this tends to have a little less mid-range. This has more mid-range. They're both great sounds. Again, the Deluxe is a little bit, you know, is my favorite, but the Harvard is a close second. 
and uh, you know they're my my favorite uh, guitar amps. So uh, there was one other question, uh, and it was. Uh, Oh, also the Harvard uh, compared to a Tweed Deluxe. So uh, I don't, you know, of course right now is not a great time to try to borrow an amp from a friend, uh, but uh, a friend of mine had a 59 Tweed Deluxe and we did a head-to-head -head between the Harvard and the Tweed Deluxe. And the Harvard had more clean headroom now, but the Deluxe got louder, but it got distorted faster. Also, the Deluxe uh, had more compression to it, and it was a little softer sounding, a little squishier, and the, uh, the Harvard had uh, firmer lows to it. So, in the end, I prefer a Harvard over a Tweed Deluxe. Uh, but, you know, it depends on what kind of guitar you play and what kind of style you're into and things like that. All right. Well, that's it, you know, for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the little uh, the Harvard and Deluxe Reverb shootout answered some questions, keep the questions coming. Uh, also know that I am, uh, be watching out because I am getting my website, askzack.com. I am uh, uh, in the process of revamping that and will hopefully be launching that soon. So thanks a lot. Hope you uh, have gone down to the corner and subscribed. I uh, hope you'll comment and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.